Hello ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, how are we all doing today? We've got another gameplay for you today. We're in the tier 7 Russian light tank, the LTG, and we are fully upgraded and we are going around wrecking things. We have the 85mm gun on this tank, so it is the fully upgraded version and the speed and mobility is just fantastic. Unfortunately we're on the wrong spawn in mine, so I'm going to go up and spot and then I'm going to skedaddle back as far as I can. Um, if I can get a shot on people such as the T71A, uh, T71 sorry, I will do, back up and roll away. The gun itself has actually got a really nice damage roll. You can get like between 160 sometimes up to 200 plus. So it does depend on how RNG feels as to whether you'll get a decent damage roll or not. At the moment, there's not really much I can do in terms of going up. So I'm going to take my favorite spot and go along the left. Whilst we're moving around, let's have a look at the tank in question. Fully upgraded, we have a 650 horsepower engine, around about 63 kilometers an hour. And um, thankfully because of the ground we're on, when we're going downhill, we're going slightly faster. But this tank is hindered a lot by water, as you'll see, and it really does screw it over. Now, obviously, because the tank is such a low profile as well, you get the water warning very early on. So just be wary of how deep water you're going in, because you are likely to flood it in literally two inches of water, because reasons. Now, as we're going around onto the side, we want to try and make sure we're in a fair amount of cover. Um, taking the shots at the STRV, who decided to shoot me, and unfortunately, RNG thought I should miss but he got his comeuppance with another person taking a shot. We're looking at the traverse speed um, around about 48 degrees a second and the turret traverse speed is exactly the same. Cromwell coming up as along the same side. Unfortunately the shell velocity and the sort of accuracy with the standard rounds isn't amazing so the APCR is a viable option but it's not something you should fire on a regular basis. It doesn't get that much ammunition so just be wary about what you're doing. If you have a really really good game you might find yourself running out of ammunition relatively quickly. The hull armour, you're looking around about 40 millimetres all the way around but your turret is actually quite good. It's not really amazingly sloped per se but you've got 110 millimetres on the front, 80 on the sides and 80 on the rear and it can bounce shots especially if people don't aim in the way that they're meant to. So you've got that luxury. You do because it's got a low, such a low profile tank you have a really good camera rating. Now I don't have uh, any sort of camo paint on this and I can't remember the crew per se but it is a relatively good crew so overall I do like the fact that I can hide in the bush unfortunately this T29 somehow keeps spotting me so that's all well and good more about the gun itself your average about 180 per shot your high explosive about 300 because of the reload time as well being ideal you're not going to find yourself in a position where you find in uh, like a ball sig or something very similar a waffle you're not going to find yourself in a position where oh shit I can't actually change my rounds. You can do really quick on the reload. And it's got some decent penetration as well. Standard about 144. Your premium is 194. With your high explosive around about 44. About 10 rounds a second. Uh, 10 rounds a minute. So around about 6 a second. Uh, oh, what am I chatting? About 6 a minute. So in total with your equipment and everything else. I've generally got it down a little bit quicker. Um, around about 4.5. Maybe about 5 seconds. About 5 seconds would be around, around about right. So again, very, very useful. Unfortunately, the view range of 360 isn't amazing. So use the concealment factor of the tank. Try and keep it in cover if you can. Because of its such low profile as well. Unfortunately, the gun depression is a bit meh. But it means you can get into spots and uh, try and hit people before they even know you're there. This T25 AT, again, not really the tank I want to be coming up against because it has a big gun. He's only got the 90mm though on it, so it's not going to do that much damage. Unfortunately, he does miss it on a regular basis. And I'm firing APCR at the moment only because it's the gun or the ammunition I've got selected, but it can use normal, especially when I'm aiming at the driver's port, which is a weak spot. I want to try and get him out of the way as soon as possible. Bit of a stalemate at the moment in the middle of the map. People aren't really going up and going down. You've got the far corner in D7 and D8. A lot of action going on. I found myself in a really good position. No one has really protected this left arm flank and all I need to do is to remove the T25 AT and I can find myself in a flank position. Get around the back of people. Whilst the gun itself isn't amazing, the mobility and the speed of this tank means I can get into position relatively quickly and make sure that people are either not aiming in my direction, maybe got rear armour, or I get their attention off but because of the speed of the tank I can put myself around them before they've turned their turret. Now I have a little bit of fun with this T25 AT. He's a one shot and I don't really want to lose too much health because there are a lot of tanks left alive. So I'm going to wait until I'm undetected. 
I'm then going to sneakily go up on the right hand side and see if I can spot him again. Now this is something I wasn't able to do later on in the game but we'll go to that. Unfortunately being hidden behind the rock he doesn't really have too much of a chance and to make sure I get the shot and the kill I pop an APCR into him and he does get removed. I know artillery is somewhere over there or I did but one of the artillery is dead, the M4043 and the other one is skedaddled somewhere else and I wasn't quite sure where. I assumed he was on the back of the base. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, I wasn't honestly too sure. Even though that being the case, I didn't want to cap the base too much because of the tank that's in the middle and the ones around the side. I wanted to try and give support to the TD, the AT-15 on the other side. There is another tank that's coming up behind me to capture the base and I don't want to give the fatherland too much of an option to be able to pop back. I don't think there's going to be enough time for us to catch the base and to be able to defend it against the Oni. Well, the Oni Hunter 6 and his uh, fatherland. So I'm going to take pop shots into the back. Russian armor being Russian armor, the black hole generator is available on all Russian tanks. He takes a lot of ammunition and bounces a lot as well. I do switch to APCR ammunition for this tank in particular, but I have a quite a decent spot I'm in. There's a lot of open ground between me and him. So unlike his actual message that he sent to me, um, complaining that I was using premium ammo and that apparently I could go forward and uh, go around him, there is a lot of open space, so I don't want to take that risk. At the moment, I'm not being shot at by artillery, and he's taking interest in the Cromwell B. If Cromwell B stays where he is, that's all good, and when I'm undetected, I can pop out and take a shot, then get detected and roll back. But because this uh, game is very, very trolly, sometimes I do get the hit, sometimes I don't. This, though, is a very, very good tactic. Using the camera rating of the tank to be hidden behind a rock to start with, and using the bushes on either side so that I can get myself into position to shoot after I've spotted him, hopefully get the shot and the kill. This is the idea, if I remove the fatherland from the game, then in theory I can go into the base and cap it. There's the artillery shell coming over from the left, and I get a tracking shot into the, the fatherland, and it's really starting to annoy me, because I need him to be killed, so I can then go into the flag cap and cap it, because there isn't much in their terms left. The Carnarvon and the 110 are both near enough dead. I mean, the 110 is a one shot, and the Carnarvon is a two shot, I believe. And the artillery, well, it's an artillery. It's going to be relatively easy to remove. Now we're down to four tanks on their team and just me. I need to remove the Fatherland, and I do so. Really goddamn annoying to try and kill him, because the Russian army is just bouncing everything. And I've got a decision. What do I do? Ideally, I want to go up the middle. If I can do that, would be brilliant, and it means I can get myself into position of, right, We'll have top shots on people. Nope, not the case. The Canaveral is still up there. Because of the nature of the tank as well, I wanted to drive forward and the tank wanted to go left and right, so I couldn't properly aim. Fortunately, the Canaveral does miss his shot, but it does mean that I missed my final APCR shot over the top of him. So, I've got a decision. What I wanted to do, and it wasn't able to be done in this game for some strange reason, was to go forward undetected and roll back. But because of the water and the nature of this tank being so low, I couldn't put the d-pad down and actually spin around it just didn't want to go so I gave up with it who knows the Canaveral might think I'm going around forward he might think I'm not we'll take the risk and we'll see what happens I thought I figured that if he was going to be around the corner he's not going to be having much of an opportunity to be able to get me and even if he does I have 466 hit points I can kill him before he kills me I've just got to be aware of the 110 which is over in the base is he there? Is he the one capping? I believe he was the one capping. It's actually the artillery. So there he is, the 110 being seen. He manages to shoot and miss. I circle around the Canaveral, who also misses. Unfortunately, I use him as cover. Take the final shot and kill him. The artillery misses his shell, and the 110 again misses. The low profile of, of this tank, is make, well, it makes it so difficult to hit. You don't want to be trying to take in pot shots or something. You want to wait until it's close, but they don't. They try and take shots, and they miss, and... I'm still there with 466 hit points. I can take a shot from this 110 and he's literally, he, he can sneeze and he will die. Somehow I've managed to pull it off and have around about half my HP or just above. Now what have I got left? The 110, near enough dead. It's a done deal. He's going to die, surely. He's sat behind the rock. I don't know exactly what he was trying to do. He wasn't prepared for me to come around the corner. He wasn't prepared for anything at all. And then by the time I'm already here, he's dead. The artillery is the only one next. In theory, you want to try and keep as much distance as possible because you want to make sure he doesn't derp you. 
American artillery, because of its OPness, which it genuinely is, has such a good chance to actually just damage you. So, quick shake the turret and go, no, 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 go play proper tank, lol, 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 and he's dead. So, what do we have as an end score? 3,334 base XP. Well, I say base XP, overall XP. The base XP uh, was 1,700. Got a mastery badge. Obviously, we have Defender. Thank you very much, Mr. Artillery. I very much appreciate that. You also contributed towards my mastery badge. Scout, because we spotted 10 people in the entire game, which was pretty much at the start when they all went up. Not really my favourite spot to go up, as I like to go around the left. Fortunately, because they didn't protect the flank very well, and the T25's inability to hit properly, it was a lot easier to win. Scoreboard looking very, very nice, especially towards the tank ops that's on. So I'm going to go for Team USSR for obvious reasons. I want that T100 light tank. The other team, the enemy team, didn't actually do too bad. I mean, the top four of their team, maybe top five, did some decent damage numbers. The defender, unfortunately, on our team didn't, but the assisted is there. So slight amount. Fortunately, because of the ISU and the Lorraines, decent shot at the very start of the game as well. That was a good buy, Mr. Cromwell. They were pretty much the pivotal parts. Unfortunately, we had a couple of zeros, um, but that was a bit of a hindrance. But it was a very even game, so to speak. Um, just very, very fortunate that I ended up getting the win. Unfortunately, I wasn't the last tank alive when there was five tanks. There was only four. So, very, very close to getting the Kolbanovs. But, as always, if you did like the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you beautiful people later.